بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ومن تبع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله In the name of Allah the Lord of all the worlds and I ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds on till the day of reckoning. Now, in this sitting, we're going to continue through the book of the important issues regarding the Muslim Ummah. And this is by Sheikh Abdulaziz bin Baz. May Allah have mercy upon him. Now, in this sitting, we're going to go through a few lessons that are really important for the Muslims' belief and growth in the Islamic faith of Islam. Now, this is the fifth lesson, and it's regarding Al-Ihsan. Now, what is Al-Ihsan? It is to worship Allah, the Most High, as if you can see him and if you're not able to do so know that he is seeing you now with this definition in mind do we ask ourselves on a daily basis are we doing this are we trying to get closer to Allah through our actions we need to give an account each minute if we really believe now let's go to the sixth lesson of the sitting and it's regarding the nine conditions of prayer now when we say the nine conditions of prayer what comes to mind this is a state of things that you have to have before actually starting to pray as the Sheikh has said they are nine. Now let's go through the nine conditions, please. The first one is Islam. So the person has to bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, the Most High. And that Prophet Muhammad is his last messenger. May Allah send peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad. The second condition is intellect this is when someone is not crazy he's not mentally unstable so he's an intellect good the third is being mature so the person is not a child and of course these are the conditions of prayer the fourth is purification from the state of impurity that mean the one goes through the spiritual cycle of washing the limbs the way the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged us to do. So he performs wudu or ghusl. The fifth is cleansing oneself from physical impurity. So oneself meaning his bodily parts and also from his clothing. How does he achieve the state of cleansing he washes himself properly when going to the toilet he uses water when doing his things the other part is he cleans his clothes from urine or anything that gets on his clothes in order to achieve the fifth condition the sixth is covering one's private part. Now for the woman, she has to go through a certain routine in order or say a certain sequence of action in order to cover herself properly. properly. And also for the men, 
they cannot show their private parts, especially when praying. The seventh condition is the entering of the time of prayer. So you cannot pray dhuhr in the time of asr, except if you're a traveler. And you, not, and you, you should not pray asr in the time of dhuhr, except if you're a traveler, and there are conditions with these. But generally, if you are someone sitting at home and the time for prayer comes, you should pray in the masjid with the ummah. I hope these are clear. These are very important if we want to increase our faith in our Lord and meet Him in the best of all states. The eighth condition is facing the Qibla. So whenever you want to pray, you have to face the Qibla. You cannot face any other direction. The ninth is having the sincere intention to pray to your Lord. Now, let's do a recap. One, Islam. Two, intellectual, not being crazy or not being mentally unstable. Third, maturity, not being a child. Fourth, purification, whether making ghusl or wudu. Fifth, cleansing oneself and clothing from any form of impurity, nejis, for example, urine, and so forth. Six, covering one's private part. Seventh, the entering of the time of prayer. Eighth, facing the Qibla. Ninth, sincere intention of praying. Now let's go to the seventh lesson. And this is regarding the pillars of prayer. Now we need to ask ourselves, what's the difference between the conditions of prayer and the pillars of prayer. The conditions are things that you have to have before you initiate this action. You have to be in this state before you start praying. The pillars are related to things within the action. So we are here, we have the conditions, then we start to pray. Now, when we are praying, there are fundamentals, there are pillars that we have to have within the prayer in order for the prayer to be correct. So without these pillars, the salat or the prayer is, is considered to be nullified. So bear with me. It's they are very important. Now, let's go. There are 14 pillars of the prior. One, standing if you are able to, Al-Qiyam. If you are able to stand, you should stand. If you're not able, you should sit. And that, of course, is according to your situation. Allah doesn't bear you, give you more than what you can bear. Two, the first takbir, tak takbirat al-ihram. So you say, Allahu Akbar. And this is considered within the salah. The third is reciting Al-Fatiha. Now, Fatiha is considered Sab'at Mathaneen. And remember, when you start Al-Fatiha, you should say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, to the end of the verse, and to the end of the chapter of Fatiha. That's the third. The fourth pillar is bowing, Rukua. So we stand first, then we bow. Good. The fifth is being calm when composing in standing back up from bowing and going. So whenever you move from one position to another, you should be calm and doing this in a tranquil way. Okay. The sixth is prostrating on the seven limbs as the Prophet ﷺ has ordered us to. And these are the toes of both feet, both knees, both hands and the forehead and nose to the ground. So let's go again. When we prostrate, we put both all the toes, 
from both feet, both knees, both hands, forehead, nose. And this is the sixth pillar of the prior. Now, the seventh is raising from prostration. The eighth is sitting between prostration. The two prostration, of course. The ninth is tranquility in all acts and proportion and prostrate uh, movements. Yes. The tenth is performing the above pillars in a sequential order. What does this mean? Whenever you do a pillar in the Salah, it has to be in its place. You cannot do one pillow before. You can't say, oh, I, I want to read Surah Al-Fatiha at the end or before at tashahud We have to do it the way the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said. Sallu kama ra'aytumu usalli. Or kama kawla bi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Pray in the way that you see me praying. So we have to do everything in a sequential order as the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has Told us to do it. Okay, tenth is perf um, tenth. Sorry, eleventh, the last tashahud. Twelfth is sitting for the last tashahud. So you're making the tashahud verbally and sitting in that puzzle position for a tashahud. Thirteen is exalting the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi while in prayer at the specific time. That the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned to us. The fourteenth is Taslim, giving salam from the right to the left. Now these are the pillars of a salah prayer. If you don't have these, your salat is considered invalid. Now, let's do a quick recap because it might be too much for you in one go. Now let's go. Number one, standing. For Salat Qiyam. Two, the first Takbir, Takbir al Ihram. Reciting Al Fatiha. Fourth, bowing, Ruku. Fifth, being calm and composed in standing back from bowing. So when you stand, then you bow. You should go return to the standing form in a tranquil and calm way. The sixth, prostrating on seven limbs. We have to prostrate on our seven limbs. Six, um, rising from prostration. Eighth, sitting between the two prostration. Ninth, tranquility in all acts of movements. Ten, performing the above pillars in a sequential way. Eleven, the last tashahud. Twelve, sitting between, sitting for the last tashahud. Thirteen, is exalting the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, while in salah at the specific time. Which will be at the end of Tashahud. 14 Taslim, giving salam from the right to the left. And these are considered the pillars of prior. Now let's go to the eighth lesson, which is the, obli uh, the obligation, obligation acts of prior. These are things that you must do. And if you do not do them, your salat is considered of a lesser rank, except if you do, uh, if you prostrate at the end uh, after taslim, as some of the scholars have differed the way you do a sahu and so forth. So, let's go again. So we have done three areas. The first area is the conditions, things that you have to have before actually praying, before salah. So you have to hit me in this form before you start praying. Third is things that you have to do while in the prayer. So do not get them confused. And the last thing, obligation of acts of prayer. Things that you do in the prayer and if, you're, if you do not do it, your salat is considered of a, a lower degree. Except that you do or yes, or this, uh, at the end of the prayer, if you forget. Okay? Now, I don't think our time will push us to complete this eighth lesson, but kindly tune in for a follow up of the 
obligations of the prior, acts of prayers. I ask Allah, the Most High, to give us a good understanding of our religion and give us a good ending so we can meet him on the day of reckoning in the best form with the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Muhammadin Wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah